Hola, aloha, ciao, guten vend. It's Cara Riley, and I'm here wanting to welcome you to the Photo Tour Global Directory. Um, uh, <laughs> now, we're, that sounds like Google Gremlin. We're starting over, so take two. <laughs> this is Cara Riley. Aloha, hola, guten vend. We're here live on the Photo Tour Global Directory show, and we're proud to welcome you to the Connection episode number five in Reykjavik, Iceland. And Photo Tour Global Directory is a website where consumers can connect with photographers <laughs> all over the world for workshops, uh, commercial help, or just tours. This is going to be a fun show because we have three global personal photographers available and two consumers who are students attending workshops and tours. So we'll be connecting um, with exactly what we're going to learn and how much fun we're going to have. First, I'd like to introduce the people on our film strip so that you'll know who we're talking with. And I'm going to put the blue box here on Yoran, and she will <laughs> tell us exactly your name because they can see it on the screen, but I can't pronounce it. So tell, tell us how you say your name mm -hmm. here, Yoran. Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Yoran Shep Guðlaugsdóttir. <laughs> And that's what we're going to be hearing on the on Iceland. And I know Mike had made some great uh, uh, comments on uh, trying to get all those alphabets together here. <laughs> so Yoran yeah, will be our first speaker, our first photographer, who's going to take about six of us on a wonderful uh, photo tour on June 8th. And then we also have Luke Thibault from Antwerp, Belgium, who is a professional photographer. And uh, he will be telling us a little bit later about extreme um, photo shoots in Iceland this summer that you're going to be able to connect with. So this is going to be fun. And they've all put some amazing photographs in our event so that you're able to see uh, what Iceland is all about. Then our third uh, personal global photographer is Mike Berenson from Colorado Captures, and he specializes in night photography and also um, is offering workshops and just got back from Iceland. So Mike, you're, we're going to love hearing your input on uh, uh, photography in Iceland from, from your perspective. And we also have Emmeline. Uh, Morris Sayer here, and she is a Colorado photographer, plus she is going to be um, a consumer uh, with us on the uh, workshop that Mike is providing, and then part of the group in Iceland, where Joran is going to be sharing with us. So we're going to get right here to Joran. And so what happened um, to make this connection was on Google+. Plus. Uh, I personally, with uh, my husband and daughter, are going on a voyage um, on the North and Baltic Sea and wanted to connect with photographers. So Joran was right there, and we connected. She She's created a wonderful time for us. She's going to be picking us up at the ship and dropping us off and sharing all about Reykjavik, Iceland. So, Joran, tell us how you got started in photography and a little bit about you in Iceland. <clears throat> yes, um, actually I've always been interested in taking photos since I was little, but it was just like uh, three years ago that I really got into it seriously, you know, when I got my real uh, first camera. So it's actually, yeah, it's actually exactly three years uh, this month since I really started doing serious photography and it's not my main job or anything. I have other duties, so I have another job, uh, but this is, has become a real passion to me. So this is what I love to do, actually. 
Well, that's wonderful. Well, we're excited to have you pick us up and be our personal guide. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm looking so much forward to it, and I'm going to see you, as you told us, on the 8th of June, and I'm going to pick you up uh, early in the morning, 8 o'clock or something, and we are going to have a fabulous time together. Yes, and um, uh, Joran, tell us about, you've just published a special booklet about Iceland, and then once you tell us about that, then let's go to your screen share so that people can see maybe the booklet and some of the pictures and, and what we'll be doing on our fo special photo tour. Mm-hmm, sure. <clears throat> Okay, here is, uh, can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Okay, this is just the front cover of the book. I'm just going to show you the front cover of the book. And I put the link as well uh, where you can buy it. It's very handy. You can buy it uh, through Blurb uh, online. And uh, yes, as you uh, told them, I recently decided to do this little handy book guide. Uh, it's really handy for people who are coming to Iceland maybe for a short time and they don't have much time to organize or plan trips or something like that, but still want to see something, you know, some do some day tours or something like that. So in this little book I have collected uh, some of my favorite places that is, it's very easy to travel to from Reykjavik, for example. And I've put uh, some descriptions with a little photo and also the coordinates. So it's really easy, yeah, really easy to, for people to find those places. And, well, yeah. that's great. And we also have it on the description, uh, Joran. And so they'll have a link there and also on the about on YouTube, so we're yeah. ready now to go on our tour. Yes, exactly. I, I just want to share with you first, uh, because I have been doing some day tours with some fabulous people, and the first uh, three photos are from my last photo trip I did uh, in March. With a great we're, couple. Still, we're still on your book photo. You need to uh, have you advanced the screen? The screen share is not showing us. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, right. yeah. So this is the. Uh, I'm just gonna. This is from my last photo tour I did uh, with this amazing couple from the U.S. They came and asked me to take them on a tour, and we went on a fabulous tour to the Snæfellsnes Peninsula in the West, Iceland. And this is just, you know, so you have the feeling how it is. It's just, you know, we are just having fun and it's really relaxed and that's actually the point of oh, it. Emmeline, Emmeline, are you ready to get on the ground like that and shoot this, this church? Yeah. <laughs> I, I am. I was just thinking, okay, what, what is the weather going to be like? What, how <laughs> that's a good question. prepared in June? That, what's, that is a good question, Emmeline. Well, how should we dress for June? Yeah, I mean, this is Iceland, you never know, you could face uh, a good weather, you could have sunny, warm days in June, but also you could have, I mean, it could be windy, rainy, foggy, so just be pre prepared, I mean, take your good outdoor clothing, good sturdy shoes, and then you're all set. That's Okay. Now, yeah. is, this, is this the church with the special story? No, this is actually in West Iceland, and I just okay. I just wanted to show you know you know the atmosphere, yes. how much fun we're we gonna, had. We're and gonna be rolling in the grass. We're gonna have fun. <laughs> yeah, yes, please. We have plenty of space in Iceland. I mean, yeah. So you're gonna be fine. And this is also from the same tour. We of course met some horses. They are all over the place. We have like, Iceland have like 80,000 horses, so you can see uh, the inhabitants of Iceland are, yeah, 300,000, and we have 80,000 horses, so. So, no, uh, this is a good question, because Mike, you took an amazing picture of a beautiful blonde <laughs> horse, but uh, are they just running around, and how come there's 80,000 horses? Yeah, uh, they are, I mean, they are running around, they are outside, uh, most of them uh, all year round, and, uh, but they are normally behind a fence, so they are not totally, you know, free, 
but it's really really easy to approach them and as soon as they notice you they come walking towards you and they are really curious re re really kind and they want to be a model all the time you know they just really love <laughs> being shot so they, they are adorable really adorable so we should bring some carrots <laughs> yes please <laughs> or, yeah. credentials. they want to be on the magazine cover Exactly. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's what you're on saying that they're models, so that's great. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, this one is, yeah, he's waiting to be shot, and the guy there is absolutely, uh, obviously not shooting at him. So <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but yeah, I got the shot. The <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this Thank is you. from the same tour, actually. I just want to show you, you know how the atmosphere is. It's just relaxed and we are having fun and that's actually the main, main uh, or actually the, what would we really want to get out of it, you know, out of this tour. I think that, I think the great thing for me is that you're, you're telling us where we need to go to get the shots we need and I don't have to figure it out. That's, that's my favorite part. <laughs> Mike was just there and he'll tell us how, you know, it's kind of hard to figure it all out, isn't it Mike? Oh yeah. It's easy yeah. to know on the way out of there where you should have gone, but that's not what you're after. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you have limited time, then I think it's great to have someone local or someone who knows the area, and you can, you know, go directly to those places really quick and easy. So, yeah, you are in a good hands, I promise you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And uh, can you see this photo? Yeah. Uh, have you yeah. gone beyond the girl in, with the red? Yeah, yeah, okay. Now I'm going to start uh, with the first place I'm going to take you to on the 8th of June. We are going to heat uh, right uh, to the south coast, you know. After I pick you up very early, we are going to drive to the south coast and we are going to drive to... Uh, we're, still on the same, we're still on the same photo. It hasn't changed on my screen. Maybe. Oh, there. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so we're going to start on this waterfall called Cellulans Foss, and it's a very popular waterfall on the south coast, uh, basically because it's very easy to access, uh, and you drive, you pass by this waterfall when you drive along the south coast, so you can actually see it from the road, so it's really easy, you don't have to hike or anything. And we are going to explore this waterfall, and what is beautiful about it is you can walk behind it or you can take a little circle so that's really adventurous you know to stand there get a little spray in your face and even photograph it from behind so, so uh, Emmeline are you going to bring the umbrella and Priscilla and we'll get you behind the waterfall <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my suitcase is getting pretty full already Priscilla's coming uh, I don't know about the umbrella but I do have uh, a plastic sleeve for my camera Oh, I think we all need umbrellas. Don't we? <laughs> Will it be raining? Don't you think uh, Baltic and North Sea, there's going to be a lot of rain? That would be a question to Luke and Yoran. Is, aren't we going to get a lot of rain? In Iceland? or uh, Just around the, that whole area. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you never know. I mean, there could be rain. Uh, you have to be prepared at least. Okay, I've got everything. a small umbrella up. Put in the, the suitcase. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, this is uh, it's a beautiful waterfall. It's uh, like falls 60 meters from the cliff, and you're gonna love it. Uh, it's really picturesque as well. So. <clears throat> what, what time of day was this photo taken? This was taken in March uh, this year, around uh, six o'clock. In the evening, six, six, eight, yeah, six p.m. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, now, it's about two hours from Reykjavik to this um, two-hour drive, um, Joran. Yeah, it's around two-hour drive from Reykjavik, and as I said, we are gonna go out there early, so probably we won't have any trouble with traffic or anything like that. So it's gonna be fine. Good. Great. Yeah. So this is, I mean, this, these are the stairs you need to walk to get uh, back of the waterfall, but I really <laughs> hope that it's not going to look like that. I mean, 
let's hope that it's going to be, yeah, fresh and green. <laughs> so, this is how it looked like in December. Last December, it was like minus 20 degrees, so it was kind of frosty and frozen and cold. Uh, uh, Mike, was it like that when you were there? No, it was pretty wet. Oh, it was wet. It wasn't <laughs> snowy. Yeah. No. Oh, okay, good. No, it's just so you see all the difference how it is, you know. And this is taken on the same morning uh, in December, so, you know, the difference is huge shooting in Iceland in winter time and summer time. So, okay, so next I'm going to show you two waterfalls, uh, and this is the second one I'm going to show you. It's a really amazing waterfall right next to the other one, the Selilans Pos. Uh, they are really close to each other. Uh, and we can actually drive almost all the way up to it. And it's na it, uh, it's called, if I translate it, it call, it's called uh, Canyon Dweller or Gljurabue in Icelandic. And what is cool about it is you can, you can actually, or you need to walk into the canyon or into this little cave, and then you face the waterfall, you know, and you can almost shower in it. It's, you, you get so close to it. Ooh. And there is this amazing light coming from above, and of course it's a little bit tricky to photograph it due to all the spray in there, but it's so worth it. I really recommend it. So I want to show you. Yeah, I want to show you this one. And this is just to show you how the landscape is on the south coast, because uh, most of our glaciers are on the south coast, and this is one of them. It's uh, the famous one, Eyjafjallajökull, the one who erupted in 2010. And uh, yeah, so you're probably going to see it if the weather is nice and clear. And uh, here is a close-up of uh, not the same glacier, but another one on the south coast. I recently went on a, a glacier walk. That is real, real, real uh, it was a real fun and experience. So we'll, we'll be, even in June, we'll be seen and walking on a glacier? Yeah, people can walk on glacier uh, all year round. Okay. Uh, yeah, but you have to, you know, hide uh, uh, an expert, a special guide who guides you on the glacier because it can be dangerous, of course. If you look at the photo, you can see all the, you know, holes and fissures. Oh, well, we won't be hiking on a glacier. <laughs> no, no, we won't. We don't have time. Sorry. Next time, Cara, next time. No, I don't know that's not an option for me. I'll just look at the pictures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was just, you know, a little to show you how it is. And after we, after we have been exploring on the south coast the waterfalls, I'm going to take you to the... Reykjanes Peninsula in the southwest of Iceland, so we are heating back actually. And this will be our first destination. It's a beautiful little wooden church uh, located in a place called uh, Selvogur and is built uh, very close to the ocean or to the to this ro on this rocky beach. So we are going to see that one. And then there is this, uh, yeah, this cliff, uh, really big uh, cliff that uh, rises, uh, yeah, into the reaches uh, out to the sea. Uh, it's called... Uh, I know it's a long word, difficult to pronounce and <laughs> everything like that, but it's a really majestic to stand up there and see, and, you know, see the amazing view over there. There are uh, many birds nesting there. Sometimes there are uh, puffins. I haven't seen them yet there, but uh, they say that they nest there, so maybe. Who knows? I want to see some pictures of the puffins. Yeah, yeah, that was on my list, and she said not exactly in the in the peninsula area. <laughs> so, no, the most of them are in the west fjords, actually, in the west. 
So not even in uh, ice of figure. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could be. Yeah, you could see it so, somewhere around there because okay. they mostly are in in the west fields. Or yeah. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. So uh, we are gonna. Yeah, we are gonna keep on with our journey on the Reykjanes Peninsula, and this lake is called uh, Green Lake uh, because of the color. Uh, it's a volcanic uh, crater lake. Uh, it's not very big. I mean, you can see the whole lake uh, when standing there. And it has this very spectacular color, like blue-green. And this is the same lake, just taking, uh, I mean, a few minutes later during sunset. And then we are going to see some very hot spots. Uh, this is in the same area. It's called Seltun. And you know, it's uh, mud pools, uh, very steamy, very hot, very colorful, smelly, and <laughs> yeah, you have it all there. So and, and we're supposed to bring our suits, <laughs> our swimsuits. So do you want to swim in there? Right? It's really oh, that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, I know it was. I don't a joke want to there. swim in the mud pots. <laughs> no, no, it's also it's so hot. I mean, it's burning hot, so. Okay, let's not swim there. <laughs> no, let's not swim there. But I mean, it's really spectacular, and the, the landscape in this area is like really, uh, really uh, rough and rocky, and it's like on the moon, seriously. And someone described this particular area like uh, the corner of hell. It's like being like coming uh, to the corner of hell with all this smell and, and rocks and stuff like that. I don't know about that, but it's really. Uh, I think I've been to Hell in uh, the Cayman Islands. They have an actual little town called Hell, don't they, Emily? I don't know. I haven't been to the Cayman. Oh yeah, yeah. No, they do. <laughs> I sent a postcard from Hell too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, let's see. Uh, this I is look probably more like it, though. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to your experience. What you're gonna think about it? It's gonna be. Interesting. So yes, uh, this is uh, very close to the geothermal area. It's the biggest lake on the on the peninsula, on the Reykjanes Peninsula, called Kleivarva, and it's like uh, 97 meters or something deep. And of course, we have a story. We have stories about everything in Iceland, and they said say that uh, this lake is inhabited by a monster. Uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna meet it, meet, meet the monster, but who knows? You know, you never know. So well, we'll we'll, we'll be prepared, and we have actually uh, from our audience, um, mm -hmm. Renee Gruber mentioned that the Northern Lights, also known as Aurora Borealis, can be seen in the southern. Oh, can that be in southern Iceland? So the answer is yes. Renee and uh, uh, Run is showing us some of the photos and actually Mike um, Berenson will also have some photos so thanks for asking that question and the answer is yes <laughs> yes it is uh, and this this is taken this is shot uh, in March uh, and this place is very popular I mean there are many people who go to this lake because it's close to Reykjavik and um, the light pollution from the city is not it, it's it's not so so much so you it's a good place to shoot northern lights if you are based in Reykjavik and this is the lake as well I just wanna show you you know the uh, so you get the idea how it looks like this is of course taken in shot in winter time and as you can see you know the landscape is really rough with the lava and the black sand and the blue uh, water. So this is uh, how it is. Well, this will be uh, because I'm used to lava in uh, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So this will be uh, snow lava. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, it doesn't look like that right now because the snow has melted. But, uh, you know, it's just so we get the idea how rough this landscape is, you know? And yes, and then we are going to drive further uh, to the 
southwesternmost part of Iceland. It's called the Toe of Reykjanes, if I translate it. And then you will see this uh, beautiful cliff that is uh, rising from the sea. Uh, it's I think it's 43 something meters high and you can uh, hike up and uh, walk up on top to see the amazing view over the sea and uh, over the beach and there are also many birds nesting in this cliff and this is taken from the same area, the same cliff just from a different point of view and uh, this also is just well from the same area, just different point of views. So you can see there are some rocks and uh, sea stacks, and it's really uh, a rocky area. And this is also from the same place. Hmm. That's good. Uh, yeah, thank you. And. And now we are almost getting to an end of our journey. I'm going to take you to another uh, steamy area called Gunnu uh, Kver or, or Gunnu Geyser of Gunna. And Gunna, she was a ghost or is a ghost. <laughs> we have so many stories. So you're going to meet a monster and a ghost, and I don't know what. Oh, are, are there any aliens? We have on uh, um, Google Plus Alien Abduction Friday, so we can maybe mix the ghosts and the uh, monsters with the aliens. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I mean, we are going to see it all. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like, I mean, yeah, the story says that uh, this Gunna woman, she was laid in this hot pot and this area is haunted by her. But anyway, this is a very steamy hot area with bubbling hot water, almost like 300 degrees Celsius wow. hot. So it's really hot and steamy and smelly as well. And this is uh, from the same area. So as you can see, it's it's kind of like walking on moon, don't you think? Wow. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. I, I think I saw Mike uh, smiling when you called it the steamy area. You know, so we got to have some photos with some steamy titles. <laughs> yeah, steamy. It's going to be a, a hot day, huh? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. At least you you won't get cold there. I mean, if we have uh, some breeze, it's always warm and hot in those geothermal areas. So at least we can warm you warm you up there. Okay, so our last destination will be the Blue Lagoon. Uh, we are not gonna go into the lagoon, but we are gonna explore the area uh, around it. And you are going to be able to, <clears throat> you know, see the lava and the extreme blue water around. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want that shot. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the the color is, it's yeah, it's kind of crazy blue, beautiful. And this is uh, the same area, you know, uh, with the lava and the moss, and yeah. Yeah, so actually this is the last image uh, from the tour I'm going to take you. Great. Uh, well, that's it. I'm thrilled. Nice. We don't have to figure it out. Uh, em Emma and I had went to the White Sands not too long ago. <laughs> we were figuring it all out by ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, as, as in this picture, I mean, this is a typical beach for Iceland. We have all, yeah, most of our beaches are pitch black. Uh, we have some white beaches in the West Fjords, but most of our beaches are black. So either black or, you know, really rocky. So this is a typical beach from, from the south coast. And this is actually, I'm just going to, go through three or four photos to show you uh, samples of maybe some of the places that me and Luke are going to offer in the workshop. So 
And then he's going to show you more photos later, okay? Okay, great. So, yeah. This would uh, be an example of what will be available this coming summer, right? Ex yes, exactly. In the extreme workshops. Yes. And um, wh while we are uh, have a little break here, um, Lucas Stanek um, just mentioned that, hey guys, huge fan of Iceland here. I thought it would be worth mentioning that northern lights will be hard to spot during the summer when most of the foreigners tend to visit. And that's true. We, uh, that's a great point, Lucas. Thank you. Uh, we won't be seeing those aurora borealis, but uh, it was fun watching them. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you 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 will have, you will have to go, go ahead. We'll finish up with the uh, extreme workshop, and we'll get right on to Luke. Okay, just a few photos. I mean, this is from the south coast as well. One of my favorite view and area, Tirhola A. Uh, it's amazing area. You can spend the whole day there with your camera. It's endless photo opportunities. Sunset, sunrises you know, uh, beautiful cliffs and uh, bird life. So this area is totally amazing. This is, uh, this is uh, a waterfall, uh, good, no, sorry, Skovafoss in on the south coast, not, not so far away from the one we are going to see, the Selgnasfoss. Uh, it's amazing place as well, endless opportunities to shoot this waterfall, either from above, like uh, this photo is shot, or, uh, yeah, as I say, there are endless opportunities. This is from the same spot, the Dirhola A, uh, a little peninsula. Uh, and this uh, spectacular rock is called Eagle Rock, because eagles used to nest in this rock before, but don't do it anymore. But it's amazing view there, and amazing beautiful to see those waves and the basalt sea stacks uh, you can see in the back. Uh, and yes, so I think Luke is going to show you some more shots from this area. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Joran. And yes. we're, here we are to uh, Luke, and you pronounce his last name Thibault, and that's like Tim Thibault, our famous footballer in the, in the U.S. And um, Luke was not familiar with Tim. So, uh, but uh, Luke, tell us a little bit about your background and how you've. Um, you're living the dream with uh, doing photography 24/7, and uh, now going into some extreme workshops. So tell us, tell us how a little bit of history about yourself. Okay, so my name is uh, Luc Thibault, and since uh, uh, more than 25 years, actually, I uh, have like a commercial background in photography. So it's not, it's only like two years that I'm. Working on my uh, my second career, so let's say, um, because uh, at one point I got fed up in commercial photography, and um, I was you know asking myself this question: What do you want to do tomorrow if you didn't get paid? So in after like two days, I uh, I uh, came up with landscape photography because unconsciously I was actually I was doing it already. So when I went on hikes and walks or whatever, I always had my camera with me and I was taking pictures of landscapes. Plus, I also was uh, experimenting with a technology called solography. It's, uh, it's a really basic principle, you know, these old uh, uh, film boxes, uh, small black film boxes where they used to put the rolls in, the film rolls. So I made like a small camera out of that and then, you know, Hang it, hang it somewhere where there is a nice scenery, and leave it there for like a month up until six months, and then for exposing. And then you, what you get is like the 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 trail of the sun for like six months. So there's nothing involved with uh, chemicals or so. You just put it under the scanner, and then you work on it in Photoshop. You you can see some examples on the on, on my website if you if you like. So, but. Anyways, anyways, so I started, you know, I, I told myself, yeah, okay, landscape photography. So 
long story short, I uh, basically I stopped doing commercial. I com stopped completely, and I you know started traveling and, and making making pictures. And at one point, I uh, two years ago I went to Iceland, and I was re literally completely flabbergasted by the landscape. And I was I really fell in love with it. And uh, yeah, since then I ever every time I, I, I go I go back as many times as I can. So last last summer I went there for like six weeks, and uh, I rented a camper and drove around uh, along the complete uh, country. And uh, yeah, so and now uh, I had this idea to to share my knowledge, and uh, I came up you know with setting up a, a workshop. So, and in the end, by you know, you know, posting on Facebook and posting on Google Plus, I got my name out there, and people seem to really like my pictures. So, and um, at a certain point, I was, uh, you know, getting along with uh, preparing the the workshop and finding out things how to do it and whatever. I encountered uh, Jorin, and. Uh, I thought it would be very, very wise to have a, a reliable partner in Iceland, and I contacted her and I asked her if she wanted to be part of the of the tours, and she, yeah, she agreed, and I'm I'm very lucky to have her. So, uh, so we both go are going to do uh, starting from the summer. We don't have an exact date yet because things are accelerating so fast that we can't follow up. I mean, uh, everything is coming our way in a positive. In a positive meaning, so uh, and we can't keep up the pace in following, uh, starting it up. So, but that's basically basically my story. Okay, great. Well, we'll be looking for your beautiful shots. You're going to share your screen with us now on some some of the shots, and we'll um, uh, go a little uh, faster here. And I, so you want to share your screen, Luke? Sure, I'm I'm working on it. Great, yeah. great. And um, Cindy Dyer is uh, saying no visuals when I try to connect. Um, if you're on a cell phone or an iPad, sometimes it doesn't work. I, I don't know what else to tell you, but um, if you just click on um, the event on Google+, you should be able to see what we're seeing. Just click the play button. Okay. Or you can see the archive or directly on YouTube. So sorry, Luke. I just was uh, answering no the questions that we're getting from the audience. Sure. No problem. Okay. So uh, you want me to explain some things about these yeah, pictures? Yeah, just, just briefly on some of these pictures. They're just a beautiful. This one was really an interesting story. <laughs> yeah, this actually is, is one of the most famous spots in, in Iceland. I mean, everybody adores it because it's uh, it's so it's so special because uh, it used to be an airplane from the U.S. Uh, Navy, it's called uh, Skytrain or Dakota, and in uh, November 24th, 1973, it, uh, it had to make a, an emergency landing. So, and long story short, the crew survived uh, the crash, and uh, since then, since then the, the, the plane is, uh, has been left there for forever since. So and now it becomes like a, an, an iconic place, you know, to either shoot the, the plane with the, with the nice uh, environment, and if you're lucky like me here to have an, uh, an amazing sky, uh, a lot of photographers use it also as a background, you know, uh, as a prop, let's say, in their photos. So, um, but actually, this 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 picture is uh, is a uh, they call it uh, time stacking. It's. Uh, I made a time lapse also, which you can see on Vimeo. If you go to Vimeo, you can just uh, put my name there, and then you come on my uh, my my page, and there you can watch the the time lapse. And actually, this is uh, a scene out of the time lapse, which I I found a technique called time lapping, and I thought by myself, yeah, this these pictures they they get a second life after. Uh, after that, I used them for for time lapse, and I said, "Yeah, I can use them again and make nice shots out of it." So, and this is a combination of 300 pictures, and that is why you have the the amazing, amazing sky up there. So, <clears throat> uh, next is uh, Tingvellir. It's uh, it's probably going to be uh, one of the spots we're going to visit. It's an amazing place. It's very, very beautiful. 
So uh, it has also a, a little waterfall there. Um, and then I go to my favorite spot. Oh. Oh, that's beautiful. Do you still do you still see the pictures? Oh. Yes, we're seeing yes. the drama in the sky and the rolling. Yeah. So yeah, this is and probably your favorite spot too. It's it's in the center. It's uh, in the center of Iceland. It's uh, it's called Land Manalauer. I hope I pronounce it right, I, but it won't be far next to it. But uh, it's it's it actually it has no words or no picture can show what you feel, what you smell, what you what you experience. It's really an amazing place. And we hope we hope to include it in our tour because um, the problem is that uh, you have to go by four with a car, four by four car. And uh, in June in June the 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 roads probably aren't open until half of June. So so it's a little bit of a risky business to uh, yeah to set up a date and not be able to, to go to the to the to, to the center of Iceland which is really 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 amazing. So we hope to, to be able to include that when the when we are allowed to. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is another shot from there. It's really amazing scenery. The texture that you see there. The color is yeah. The mountains. The mountains, I mean it's really yeah it's yeah, I, actually, I don't have really words for it. I, all I can do is, you know, show what I experienced. And well, there, you can just show us the pictures. So uh -huh, uh -huh. You can just show us the pictures. <laughs> this is a uh, Jokulsarlun Lagoon. This is actually a sort of a detail shot which I uh, found when I was walking there, and uh, the, <clears throat> the the pieces you see on the bottom is actually broken ice. That's how I I call the picture also like that. So. I really found it a, a really interesting picture to take because it's it's different than what you usually see from this place. Uh, this is another view from there. It's also on Jakul Sarlon Lagoon. Really nice to uh, to walk around there, and if you're lucky, like I was here, you you don't know what you're encountering. It's you go you go nuts what you see. I mean, it's like it's like a a one-time experience. It's really so beautiful. This is on the uh, Jakul Sarlon beach. That's actually on the opposite of the lagoon. You have this beach with uh, where actually uh, ice ice blocks, I call them. They they arrive there, and that's the place where they are going to die because there they melt. They melt. They just melt. <laughs> the ice will die there. I like that. Um, <coughs> will we see any of this, uh, or close to any of this, uh, jo Joran, when we're there in June, or no? It'll be gone. Mm -hmm. No, they are. I mean, no. The uh, the glacier, uh, the ice is still uh, on the lagoon all year round. But yeah, they are. But we are not gonna. It's too far. Oh, okay. Although it's almost on the east coast, or yeah, southeast oh, coast. Okay, so we won't see ice on the beach. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too bad. Too bad, yeah. I have yeah. to come back for your extreme workshops. Yeah, I was going to say that. You have to come to our extreme workshop. Yeah. <laughs> this is another another picture, completely different than the other one, because it's a different time of the day. I mean, it's actually shot in on the same evening. But here you can see how the landscape changes, or the seascape changes from from minute to minute, from hour to hour. It's completely different. So you can, you know, you go crazy when the weather is good and the, the, the clouds are nice and the sun is there. Yeah, you can shoot forever. So that's, uh, yeah, that's basically all my shots I, uh, I got. Great, okay, well thank you. Welcome. And now, this is really going to be a wonderful addition here. We have um, Mike Berenson, who just was visiting Iceland, and he has some amazing photos to share, and he does night shooting, and um, like uh, the, our 
last question per, uh, was said on there, we won't be seeing the aurora borealis in Iceland, but Mike took some also, and uh, really beautiful. So Mike, share some of your shots from Iceland, what you thought, and uh, how you felt about getting around there on your own. <laughs> oh, you bet. I, I just loved it. It was a, a chance for me to do some exploring both uh, on my own and in a kind of a guided format, and I, I thought for me that was it, it was just a, a a wonderful experience. And I heard it described as a a photographer's paradise, and I, I truly believe that even if you're not able to see anything at night, and all you're able to see in Iceland is during the day, boy, I'm not sure there's a better place to go to. And and while it's not a competition, it's I just came home so fulfilled as far as all the things that I got to see and captured. It was truly a wonderful experience. So, so let me share some of the pictures that I've got that I captured while I was there. I'm going to show a couple off, and let me share my screen. If you'll bear with me for a second, here we go. And while Mike's getting prepared here, I was uh, um, honored to be able to be in one of his workshops in uh, Moab, which he'll tell you about in a while. So there we go. Okay, Mike. All right, so this is one of the first pictures that I captured shortly after getting off the plane. This is at the Blue Lagoon, and it's one of the pictures where I was lazy. I didn't even pull out my good camera gear. I just shot this with my Android phone, and I was actually pretty impressed with what the Android phone could do. Yeah. Then later on that night, I was lucky enough to see some aurora. I was happy to be able to see both green and red, and here I am so excited that I point my light so that I can point <laughs> out the red in case you can't see it for yourself. I was pretty excited, as you can tell. Got a little you, bit of... You uh, those pointer lights. We had pointer lights in well, Moab, too. <laughs> what's that? You love those pointer lights. We had pointer lights in Moab, too. Yeah. Yep. And a little while later, I said I didn't care about the colors. I was just so fascinated with the beams reaching up into the sky. It, being a night photographer, it was just an awesome experience to be able to see it. And this was on the Snifelsnus Peninsula, where all this was happening. And then a little while later, I did some exploring up north uh, near Akureyri, if I remember right. This was a uh, waterfall called Gothavos, and it uh, was really clouded in most of the day, but I had a little bit of a break in the sky where the sun poked through, and that's where I got a little bit of that golden color that appeared wow. in addition to all the snowy, for the snowy foreground as well. well. That's beautiful. Thank you. And then this is back down on the southern coast. We've got some of the southern mountains and a river flowing in the foreground, a couple of Icelandic horses in the distance, and glowing skies from a uh, sunset as well. And it was uh, just a wonderful experience to be able to see both the, the coolness and the warmth of the skies. And while it showed the warm colors, I will tell you the temperatures weren't very warm, but it sure made it nice in the picture. Yeah. That's a beautiful picture. This is some of the ice that we were looking at a few moments ago, and I, I thought it was really neat that the clear ice, the ice in the foreground, is actually clear. The ice in the background has some blue glacial ice in it, and it was interesting that the clear ice, if you positioned yourself right, would pick up the colors of other objects. So it would pick up the blue from an ice chunk in the background, or if you were there at sunrise, it would pick up some of the golden colors of sunrise. But I thought that was really neat how it would pick up all the other colors. And where were you when you took these, Mike? Uh, trying to stay dry but not doing such a great job, but I was just on shore. And location-wise, the name of the uh, this area? This is in Yokel Sarlan. So this is in the beach on the southeast side of the island, and this is, I, th I believe this is just a little too far for you guys to be able to reach yeah. on your trip. How long were you there, Mike, to do all of the... I was there for two weeks. Oh, jeez. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> This was my greeting party. This was one of the Icelandic horses. I thought this this horse could have won a beauty pageant in my mind. She was just, um, how should I say, uh, hamming it up for the camera really good. She so they must have a school, Yaron, uh, for the, the uh, models, the horse models, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Teach them social skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I was saying that the ice is uh, able to pull up colors from everything around it, from the blue glacial ice as well as the orange colors of sunrise, and I just found this fascinating. This was, to me, one of my biggest draws for going to Iceland. I just love those ice chunks and how they mm -hmm. pick up the colors of anything around them. And this is in a location called Bruarfoss, 
it's uh, not um, very publicized and that you don't see many signs saying, hey, here's Brewer Foss. It's actually kind of hidden in a little residential neighborhood. Um, but it's just a wonderful combination of cascading white water and blue water below that I just found fascinating. And in fact, this was my second trip in there because I wanted to see how it would look, look after new snow and with some late afternoon sunlight. And um, I was really very happy with the results of going back in there. It, it, that's amazing shot, Mike. And this is one of the ice cave tours that I did. This is under the Vyaknayokal Glacier. I'm sure I butchered that name, but I said it quickly so you can't really tell very well. <laughs> um, this is underneath the glacier where all the walls of ice that we're looking at were all carved by the river. So it's all smooth and patterned and you can see deep into the ice all the bubbles and all the blue color. And here I am dancing around with my little flashlight so that I can do a little, little, little bit of light painting. And as luck would have it, it turned out that my light painting made a little smiley face that was looking back at me out of the ice. I thought that was intriguing when I had someone point that out to me. It's a great selfie. <laughs> you are a master light painter. I will have to say that, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. This was what I call my farewell from Iceland. This is on my very last night, just hours before having to get on the plane and fly back home. And I had, was blessed with a solar storm in Yokel Sarlin where I got to see the ice chunks. I talked about the, how they pick up the color of things around them. In this case, it picked up the color of the aurora skies above, and I just I was in heaven being able to see that. Um, it yes. was definitely my highlight of my trip for me. Pretty amazing. Didn't see that one so far. <laughs> Ah, oh, see, now you have inspired some locals. <laughs> there we go. And we're getting back to Colorado at this point. This is in Rocky Mountain National Park. I'm showing off one of the images that I captured on a Rocky Mountain National Park workshop uh, taking place at night in a place called Lake Irene where we capture, uh, among my favorites, Milky Way skies, uh, in this case reflected over a calm water reflected lake. And as I said, this is one of the places that I like to take students for a night photography workshop in Rocky Mountain National Park. And I wanted to take this opportunity to show off that side of what I do in Colorado as well. And last image that I wanted to show, this is from Utah. This is a place very much photographed called Delicate Arch. And this is me doing some light painting. And it's almost I'm almost positioned as though I'm light painting and illuminating the stars in the Milky Way beyond, which is kind of an interesting approach to it. But this is again was taken during a night photography workshop. In fact, Cara attended this night photography workshop while we were doing some of this light painting. And it was honestly just a wonderful experience to be able to include everyone in this, this, this series of captures and uh, to be able to add some uh, local color and, and flavor and character on our own. And that's what I like to be able to do in, in the pictures that I capture and, and in the experiences that we have in the workshops that I run as well. So I thought I'd show that off. And that's the last image that I had to show off. So from there, let me um, unshare, and I will turn the hands back over. Well, this has been awesome. Um, thank you, Mike. And you're Emily, welcome. do you have any questions? Because you've got two groups here. You're going to Iceland, and you're going to be with Mike and Moab. Any questions? Oh, See, this is exactly I'm, I'm... what um, the Photo Tour Global Directory Connection is all about. Consumers being able to meet photographers and ask and see uh, what it is they're going to experience. Well, I'm, I'm overwhelmed um, with excitement, actually. Uh, I'm going to be going uh, in May in just uh, about three weeks, uh, hooking up with Mike, and I believe there'll be 11 other photographers um, in Moab. Um, I have been there, but I'm specifically looking forward to it because it'll be a night shoot, and um, I want to learn from the best, and I've heard nothing but glowing reports about Mike, and I've gotten to know Mike through our local photography club. And then Cara and I met, um, we've known each other on Facebook, but then we met at the White Sands when we'd done a, a sort of a, a group of us just met up there and shot and uh, got to know her there and then found out about this wonderful trip that she was going to be taking and it was one of those uh, spur of the moment things and my husband and I said, oh, well, we don't want to miss out on this. And so by hooking up with um, all of these wonderful photographers across the world, um, it's just going to make the trip that much more meaningful. And so I can't wait uh, to meet your run in, in uh, Iceland and have three days on the island and all the other places that we're going to be exploring. Um, I just I just need to 
find time to make sure I have all the gear and everything together so that I'm uh, prepared to take hopefully some pictures that are uh, as, as nice or close to being as nice as what, we, what I got to see today. So thank you so much for, for doing this hang up today. Oh, Emily, thank you for being on and sharing. And I want to give um, Yolan another thank you because she referred another photographer to us. And a shout out to Gumi Valda, who will be uh, taking us around in Ice of the Dewar. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get that also. But um, uh, so we have a new um, photo tour global directory member, and it's all about paying it forward and and connecting with people and you can see how easy and how fun it's been um, all over the world so I want to thank you all and for those who are watching you can see all of the photos by clicking on the gallery and those of you watching on YouTube the link for the gallery event will be there uh, links to connect with uh, Yoran and Luke are on there with the Iceland um, mini book and the extreme workshops and also the links for Mike Berenson and his workshops, his night workshops in Colorado and Utah. So thank you all for your time and your expertise and just uh, sharing with us your love of photography because it really, anybody just watching, they're, they're going to say maybe I want to just move up in my photography and by connecting with photographers who specialize you really can do it and it's fun and it's easy and um, so anybody watching can subscribe to the photo tour global directory newsletter you'll get 200 free stock photos to use in your marketing and a monthly newsletter that will have workshops uh, focuses on different uh, photographers around the world and photography tips along with travel tips. So thank you all and you. we'll be signing off. Peace. Thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you in June, Yoram, and at some point Luke. <laughs> and Mike, thanks again. You're welcome. Thanks everybody. Bye bye. Thank everybody. you. Thank, thank you. Signing off now. Bye bye.